good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us. This is Inspiration Tuesdays. My name is Kim Schofield, and thank you for joining us. Today, I'm talking with Bill Luckett, co-founder of the Ground Zeroes Blues Club. Bill, welcome to Inspiration Tuesdays. Thank you, Kim. It's a fairly early morning here in Mississippi, but it uh, looks like a bright sunny day there where you are at the UAE. What inspired you to create Ground Zero in the first place, Bill? Well, I, I was retained as a lawyer and a contractor, two hats, by Morgan Freeman to help him finish out a beautiful home that he was building in the mid-90s. It's located about 30 miles, 35 miles from here as the crow flies. And he was having difficulty with the architect and the contractor at the time. And he hired me to come in and kind of, I guess, uh, clean up the job, so to speak. And the more we visited and I worked for him, the better friends we got to be. And pretty soon we're going back and forth to his place to ours and uh, going out to dinner and taking trips and that sort of thing. And he noticed these tourists coming through town. And I mean, it wasn't any question they were tourists. You know, in those days, they had a camera around their neck. We didn't have all the iPhones and all that. He said, what are these people doing here? I said, well, they're here for, for blues music. And I related to him that many of them were going to the Blues Museum, which opened back in 1979, and asking the docents there at the museum, where can we hear live blues? And they were not getting, in my opinion, a satisfactory answer. They were being told, well, you might try this place or try that place, but there was no place in Clarksdale that was offering consistently and reliably played blues music. You know, it was hit or miss. And so we looked at each other and kind of had that same light bulb go off at the same time you know, we could do something about that, and we did, and we decided to open a blues club, and uh, we searched around for a suitable building. I can recall, I wish I had a picture of this, but there we are, Morgan Freeman, a class A, world-class actor, in there with me, side by side with shovels, picking up trash and debris out of that place as we were getting it ready to convert it to a club, because uh, most blues clubs and juke joints weren't built originally to be a juke joint or a club. They were old abandoned buildings typically that were just sort of taken over, rehabbed to a point, and usually the roof would be the first to fail and the joint would just move to another building. But we fixed this one up a little more structurally sound than that indicates. And uh, But we left it gritty and kind of original inside. So we had that idea in the fall of the year 2000 and by 2001 we had opened we uh, were joined right about the time we were opening by Howard Stovall as a, another owner. Uh, his famous plantation, Stovall Plantation, is where Muddy Waters had grown up before he left Muddy did for Chicago in the mid-40s. And then more recently, a businessman from Portland, Oregon, has sort of relocated to Clarksdale part-time, and he expressed an interest in joining us as well. He brings a very good business background, uh, you know, MBA type to the table. So uh, Eric Meyer is also uh, one of our four owners. So that's our, um, we have a corporation that the four of us own, and uh, that's what entity is the operating um, partner, so to speak, for the business itself. So you were a contractor at Morgan Freeman's home and you two eventually, with the love of the blues, created Ground Zero. Back yeah, I wasn't really a contractor. I wear a little contractor hat, but I'm not really licensed. I'm a homeowner builder myself, but mm -hmm. um, I, I played the role as Morgan's sort of cleanup guy uh, advising him on how to go about getting that job back in sync and moving forward. So uh, I actually had to fire an architect or two and hire another one and sort of work closely with a contractor and take care of some issues. But that's how we met, yes. And then we uh, both had this mutual interest of starting this business. So, so how long have you been, been acting and producing movies? 
Well, I, I, I had a couple of small parts just offered to me over the years, but I started doing this in earnest in about 2014. Um, Clint Eastwood's daughter, Allison Eastwood, asked me to play a small role as a grumpy old diner chef in a movie she was producing and directing here in Mississippi. And, and then, uh, you know, you kind of wait for the break, you know, and I, I just do it as a hobby. It's fun for me. I'm starting to get pretty good roles now, though. It's gotten to be taking up more time than it probably should because it is a hobby. Uh, I've got to be on set next week in Memphis on a little movie, a time travel movie, kind of a family oriented movie. I've got one that I'm in a scene with Robert De Niro and Tommy Lee Jones and Morgan. and I play the sheriff. I've got about 30 seconds of screen time, but it's coming out in September called The Comeback Trail. And then Morgan and I just run one together and Ruby Rose is in a scene with me as well. The new kind of hot Australian actor who played uh, Batwoman and some John Wick movies and that sort of thing. Her name is Ruby Rose. Mm -hmm. I play a corrupt priest in that one. Uh, it was shot on the Gulf Coast. It's, it's called Vanquish and it came out in uh, April. And then I got a few more. I mean, I uh, probably have about uh, 20 feature films and 13 other kind of documentary type things I've done over the last six or seven years. Have you ever been to the UAE? I have not, but Morgan has, and yeah. I really want to get there. And I have a dear friend who is a lawyer, a female lawyer over in Benton, or Fayetteville, Arkansas, who spent years there. Uh, as an advisor and I she's got me all excited about maybe getting over there sometime so oh, sure. I love to make the trip but can't do it right now I don't think with COVID and all it's difficult yeah that that is true because uh I, there's definitely a plan in my future to come to ground zero um as soon as Good. we can we can uh, we not only uh, permit we encourage dancing on the bar Kim so Good. I've been up there. Morgan's been up there. There's a picture behind me right over here of us up on the bar on opening night. So uh, I give out business cards to a lot of people, uh, women, and <laughs> say, you know, if you'll present this to a bartender, then uh, here, here's one of them right here. You just give this, 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 give this card uh -huh. to any bartender and you get to dance on the bar free. Wow. And they get it. They get a kick out of that. You know, we don't charge anybody to dance on our bar, but they get a laugh out of that. You know, some of them will drink enough to get up there. So it uh, it adds to the experience in the club, I'll have to say. It's been a few years since I've done that, Bill. But yeah, We can get you back in training. So tell me, um, back to Ground Zero. How is Ground Zero inspiring new musicians to develop their talent? Uh, well, it's a stage that is just uh, so branded now that a lot of musicians will come play for free just to have to have the, uh, the sort of uh, recognition that they seem to get by just playing on our stage. They, they want to be seen on our stage and a lot of them are filmed there and they put it on their websites that they played our club and uh, we, we've just gotten so many great accolades uh, around the world in the last five years. We lost money for 17 years straight. Morgan and I had to support the club to keep it open. But then as it started to catch on and, you know, half of our visitors there are from Europe and Australia. Half of our customers are from overseas. The other half are from uh, just uh, North America, basically. And then we have scattered visitors from all over the world. So when we opened and started getting that branding that we now have, it started attracting musicians who just, we, we've had, I bet, 10 films. The History Channel was just in the other day, last Tuesday, doing a, a, a segment on uh, some of their programming called The Unexplained with the Bill Shatner. Uh, we, we have a lot of films that are shot, a lot of scenes are shot in there. And it just uh, seems to be a magnet now. We're ranked the number one blues club in America. We are ranked by American Airlines as one of the top three best live music venues in the world. 
Fodors, the travel guide people, rank Clarksdale the number one music city in America that's not Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. But, you know, we'll take number two. That puts us above New Orleans, Austin, St. Louis, Chicago, New York, everybody. So uh, we've gotten some just tremendous recognition and it's starting to drive in a lot of business now. So we're, we're in the black and we get past COVID again. You know, it looks like we're in our whatever wave we're in. It's, it's really starting to shut down America again right now. And, and, and I just wish we could get over it or buy it or whatever we need to do and get back to as near normal as possible. But we opened back up uh, this April. We were closed for over a year. Uh, I mean, completely closed. We brought in a few musicians to do some live streaming so they could enjoy a little bit of income. And we sort of spent down what we'd saved up to try to keep it, keep it kind of held together, you know. But uh, we opened in April and we're in the black, but it's, we already starting to see signs of another slowdown because of COVID. It's a sad commentary, but that's the way it is. Well, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. You are truly an inspiration. A public servant, entrepreneur, actor, pilot, founder of Ground Zero, super lawyer. It was such a pleasure to interview you today. Thank you well, so much. Kim, thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> you know, it really is heartening for me to know that I'm doing an interview with somebody in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I mean, that just kind of points up, I think, the fact that, that we do have international reputation now. I've done interviews now and with several foreign country correspondents now and uh, a lot of magazine press and all of that. And it's just good to see us kind of pull something out of the ashes and turn it into something that's, that's just offering the world a wonderful venue. So thank you for having me and spreading the word around the world in your program. It was my pleasure. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. This is Kim Schofield. Thank you for joining us. Stay well, be safe, and go forth and inspire. <laughs>